Knit and Kitten podcast number 42. My name is Mallory, otherwise known as Just a Dose of Love all around the internet. So you can find me on Instagram, Reddit, Facebook, Ravelry, and TikTok under Just a Dose of Love and A Dose of Love on Etsy. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me again today. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel. This is a bi-weekly-ish video podcast about knitting and crafts and yarn and whatever else they happen to be making at the time. And thanks so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I'm recording on February 6th. It is almost noon and it is very frigid outside today where I live in Edmonton, Alberta with my favorite felines, Sika Sonia, Chris, and a snake named Heidi. So I'm going to basically jump right into it here. But first of all, we are going into another polar vortex. And let me tell you, I think it's a really good time to be a knitter. <laughs> There's nothing quite like being able to knit yourself up a new toque or sweater or pair of socks when it is minus, I don't even want to know, outside. Yeah. <laughs> So I just need to get that out there um, before I jump into what is on my needles. And I have a new sweater that's in progress to show you. So let me just grab it here. This is the Lilit sweater pattern by Baby Cocktails. Now here's a picture of the pattern. I'm going to show it to you. The reason that I was drawn to this pattern see if you can see there's some just really nice detail around the neckline there that just drew me in and made me really really want to try this this sweater pattern and that was part of uh, part of the reason i was so excited to start it so let me just show you where i'm at so far i have spent uh, not a ton of time knitting this week actually i'm not i don't really have a reason why but I did spend a good chunk of the weekend on it. I'm actually, yeah, this is the front. <laughs> I have just finished separating my sleeve. So it's got some raglan increases here to, to the sleeves, which now have been separated. And look at that beautiful neckline. So this is knit up in the Knit Picks Brava base. It's the persimmon colorway and it is 100% acrylic. So I did scoop this up while Nitpix was having one of their sales right before Christmas. So I did end up getting a couple of sweater quantities of yarn and this is one of them. And I'm really excited because look at it, it's gorgeous. And this neck, oh yeah, okay, let me just show you a little bit more. This, this sweater is made up slightly differently than the other raglan sweaters I've knit because it actually starts with the neck where all of the other ones that I've knit up, you do like this part here. It's like the neck hole without actually doing the collar. And this one, you do all of it straight from the top down, straight, right from the top down. And this is the back. So you can see it's actually got built in a little bit of a longer collar so that it's more collar shaped around the neck. I'm not really sure how to say that. But yeah, so this is definitely something I've never tried before. It was a little difficult for me to figure out, I'm not going to lie, but I do really like how she incorporated short rows into making this collar longer. I forgot how much I love short rows, which seems like a strange thing to say, but I do. I really love short rows when it comes to shaping. My, my first foray into the short row world was with one of the Stephen West shawls. I don't even remember what it was called now, but that was my first kind of dip into the short row world. And one of my, my shawl patterns actually also includes short row, short row for shaping. So it was nice to, to get to do that a little bit again. And that's really exciting. But yeah, we've got a little bit of cabling here, a couple of eyelids, just a really nice little pattern that really makes that collar pop. So I will probably be doing more work on this this weekend, although I actually have some homework <laughs> from work that I need to do this weekend, so maybe not, but we shall see. I'm hoping to have this finished by the end of February, I think. 
if I keep going like this, I am going to have 12 sweaters this month, which is not a bad thing, but I have other things that I need to knit. Okay, getting a little off track. I'm gonna refocus. Sweater, beautiful, orange. There we go. There it is. So really excited to show you guys that. And before I just toss this to the side, better make sure I'm not going to end up with the worst yarn bar fall <laughs> when I go to re pick that up. Okay. And believe it or not, that is the only thing I have on my needles right now. I do have a project on the loom. I spent uh, not actually that long. I spent about an hour on Thursday night warping up the loom. Now I just have to thread everything through the things. That's not very descriptive. I have to thread the warp threads through their specific harness spots. None of those were the right words, but that's what we're getting. So I have to thread that through and then I can officially start on this looming project. So that's gonna be exciting. It is going to be one of the easier looming patterns that I will be trying, which is nice because maybe I will actually be able to memorize it instead of having to have my tablet up beside me the whole time. Fingers crossed. Off my needles. I do need a really quick ooh, apple cider break here. I am talking myself hoarse already. Oh. oh yum, I really do love apple cider. So I am drinking apple cider today, as I've mentioned, and I have a little bit of the West of the Fifth spiced moonshine in there as well. It's delicious, very complimentary. But I also want to show you guys this teacup that I picked up at an antique store. Here it is. It is just the cutest, cutest teacup. It is this like pastel yellow with all of this gold leaf, almost like a filigree detail. The gold is not really showing very well on this cup, but all of those leaves, every single one of these vines this is all gold and I love it. It was six dollars <laughs> and a very well spent six dollars in my opinion. They had so many teacups there and some of them were lonely teacups. They didn't have a matching saucer pair and some were lonely saucers with no matching teacup. And I wanted to buy them all, but I have a severe lack of space on my teacup and teapot shelf, so one was what I got. Just one. So good. I really do love teacups. Okay. Off my needles. This is really exciting. I am so excited to show you these socks. <laughs> There's one, and there's two. They're officially finished. These are my Dramarama socks, which now I can show you why I call them that. Here it is on my foot form, and it is so long. Look at that, it just like, <laughs> just dangles so long and dramatic and beautiful and now they are done and I am very excited. It is just a very very long stockinette two <laughs> for the sock with my heels cut in and my toes added in. I did not do afterthought everything for these socks because this is knit up in earth yarns it is their unique sock base, which is a self-striping base. It is color number 64. It is 75% extra fine superwash merino and 25% nylon. And all of these unique self-striping sock colors that they have are pre-caked into 50 gram cakes. So I could not do Afterthought Everything socks, but I do have two very nice, perfectly matched striping socks. And that is very exciting for me. 
Now these are from my mom. They were a, they are a very late Christmas present, but that's okay. They are gonna be in their, in their way, in, on their way in the mail. Wow, I really can't talk today. They will be on their way in the mail next week. And yes, she's gonna love them. Now these toes and heels, those are knit up in Lily and Pine Fiber Arts on her Daylily sock base. It is the Peach Pit colorway. And you can tell by all these, like very aptly named with all of these beautiful pinks and yellows and peachy oranges. And it's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon blend. So there it is. Jeremy around with socks. Finally finished. And now, since I have no socks on the needles, I guess I can start another pair. I don't think I'm going to do Dramarama socks this time though. I think I'm finally ready to get off the palette cleanser socks and into something with a little more of a pattern to it. I had actually bought some really lovely emerald green yarn around Christmas. I'm thinking maybe it's time to re-knit my Irish Guild sock pattern. And that'll be a really nice colorway for that. So stay tuned. I do think that's in the future. Or maybe the Kadama socks, because those would look really good in green too. We'll see. I'm very excited. Oh man, I have just been feeling so crafty lately. Just like overflowing with crafty, make things energy, which is great. I love it. I absolutely love it. Although also I need to make sure that I'm not using up all my energy so that I absolutely burn out. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. But, okay. On to my last finished object. I finished my Christmas sweater cast on. So this is the Harvey pullover. I've already worn it to work several times. It has been so freaking cold that I haven't really been able to take any photos with it, which I really want to do that soon. But if I have to, I will just resign myself to taking pictures inside instead of outside with all that beautiful snow. But I also don't want to freeze. So we'll see. But the Christmas sweater cast on. This is the Harvey pullover. It was published in the inter it's an interweave pattern. It's by Hannah Baker. And I don't even think I'm gonna be able to get the whole thing in here. So here it is. So this is my first seamed sweater. You can see the seam line here and where I seamed the front and the back together. So there it is. Beautiful, beautiful little scene. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So I'm really liking how it turned out. I think it looks just so cute where that seam is. And then the sleeve, of course, was seamed on. And there it is. Now this was knit up in Cascade Yarns on their Anthem base. It is color number 39, which is the burnt orange colorway. It's also 100% acrylic and I'm if I think I'm sold. I am officially an acrylic sweater knitter because I can throw it in the washer and I don't have to worry about it. I do have some merino yarn that will be a sweater also, but I just will have to be so much more careful with it and it's going to stress me out every time I need to wash it. Because what if it shrinks? Ooh, yeah, that's really scary. I don't want to shrink. I don't want to shrink the sweater. I will cry. I will absolutely cry. I had a shawl go through the washer once and ooh, I bawled. I bawled. It felted and was in no way ever able to be repaired and I kept it for two years hoping that I would just find a way to fix it and finally I tossed it because I it just made me so sad every time I looked at it. Never again, never again will I put something like that in the washer. Not that it was on purpose, I know better. Uh, it just ended up, it ended up in the wash, it ended up in the dryer, and I ended up pulling this 
sad, sad belted shawl out. Anyways, back to this sweater. Let's drop some stuff. So it's got a, she called it a half brioche stitch, I think, which is neat because brioche is actually on my, on my list of things to try this year. So it's this super lofty, beautiful, warm pattern in the front. And it does end up knitting up a little bit loftier than a regular stockinette stitch. So the sweater is actually designed so that's a little bit longer in the back than it is in the front. And it's because of this stitch here. And I really love it. I really, really love this sweater. I love the color. I love how it feels. I love that it's washable. And I have turned into a sweater knitter. So this was one of the patterns in my interweave pattern book. So I was gifted a book at Christmas. It's 100 knits from the interweave pattern collection. And this was one of them. And of course I had to cast it on that same day. And now it's done. That's gotta be, it's not a record for me for sweater knitting. I think it did take six-ish weeks. Well, a little bit less, but it was, it was pretty darn quick considering there's new techniques and everything in there. Okay. What else? I do want to talk about a pattern release. Now, if you're on Instagram, you may have seen this announcement um, up to three times now, so I apologize for that. But I am finally going to publish the Love Note pattern this Valentine's Day. Originally, I had knitted up hoping to release it for Valentine's Day two years ago, at least two years ago. So for sure, two Valentine's Days have passed since the initial plan to release this on Valentine's Day. But it's ready. It's, it is so, like the photos are done, everything has been edited, it's been test knit, um, I retook photos, Every, everything's been written up, everything has been standardized, it is ready to go. <laughs> it is ready to go and it will release on Valentine's Day this year. And I even have both of the hats that I knit up in this pattern to show you guys. Wow, it's like the most prepared that I've been on this podcast in a while. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that. But let me show it to you. So this is the Love Note hat pattern. Now I will show you both the ones that I've knit up because I know that this one is a little hard to see what's going on with just the variation, the variegation in the yarn. So it's a slouchy hat. Let me put it on really quick. So it is a slouchy hat. Not super slouchy, just a, a little bit of a slouch. Really nice for me because you can see that my hair, if this were not a slouchy hat, would be pulling the hat up off my ears right now, especially with this little ponytail I've got going on. But because it's got some slouch to it, that is not an issue. Okay, so. The brim is knit up with, oh my goodness, hair everywhere, sorry, with these little cables. Maybe it'll be easier to show you on the other one. Cute little cable detail that follows all the way up the side of the hat and it's, um, it's a, the pattern repeats twice on the hat, so this is mirrored on both sides. This is all twisted, like knit through the back loop stitches. We've got this turning into these little cables. We've got more little circle cables up here where they all split. We've got some nice little cable work through the middle there, and it follows up through the top of the hat. So here it is. And then we've got some actual twisty cables as well, in addition to the, the circular looking cables. So here it is. That's 
that's one side and that's the other side and I'll show you in this other one as well which I mean this is more of a Valentine's Day color you just can't really see what's going on very well it's unfortunate there it is just lovely lovely little cables just just dancing around and then they intertwine with each other I thought it was very sweet in a very yeah, just, just a cute kind of way which is why it's called my love note hat so there it is and that'll be valentine's day um i do have a coupon code that will be active it is finally so use the code finally on Ravelry to pick this up for a dollar and the same coupon code on Etsy but Etsy's a little weird with their discounts so I'm gonna have to figure that out it may not be a dollar it might be something a little bit different it's gonna depend it's going to depend on how I can work it because I'm still not super proficient when it comes to Etsy discounts also there's the top in case you're wondering what the top looks like I will show you this one on this one too. Hmm. Yeah, just needs up all nice and tidy on the top where it gets bound off. Okay, <clears throat> so Valentine's Day. And all of the information on all of the things that I have talked about will be in the show notes below. So if there's anything you missed or anything you had questions about, please check those out. Also, please email me or message me on Instagram if you have any questions about anything really. Okay, what else? I did want to show you two more things. Be super quick. I decided that I wanted to try making paper and that was what fell. But I did make paper so I, I like shredded a bunch of paper that I didn't need anymore um, because I like the idea of recycling paper and let it sit in water for like two days and then I blended it up with my soup blender. Um, we're not going to use it for soup anymore in case anyone's worried about that. And then I spent two days trying to sift through this paper pulp with these screens that I made out of dollar store canvases. So I needed the frames, but it was much cheaper than using a picture frame. So I made some screens and ended up actually, it worked, it worked. Oh my goodness, it worked. So let me show you what it looks like. Here it is, it's my paper. I made paper. Some of them are a little more yellow than others. That's because there was a couple of orange sticky notes in this batch and this was just regular paper, black and white. But here, I feel so accomplished <laughs> making paper of all things. But there it is, I, I made this basically from scratch. I mean, old paper obviously, but I made this. That's really exciting. I'm really excited, very proud. I don't know what I'm ever gonna do with this. Um, I mean, I'm going to use this, obviously, but I don't know if I'm going to try, like, binding books. That would be fun. With old paper. I think that would be super environmentally conscientious. We'll see. And the other thing I wanted to show you, it's not stash enhancement, but it's kind of like personal stash enhancement. I picked up these cute little earrings today from the lovely Roslyn. She owns Archive Boutique. She has a cute little booth at the farmer's market and she's also on Instagram and has a website but look at these little alocasia earrings. I have an alocasia. I have several alocasias actually. I really like alocasia but this is an alocasia amazonica otherwise known as the African mask plant and I have one of these. It was one of my first alocasias. I love it. And this is hand painted on lasered wood. Isn't that just so cool? Yeah. Oh, love it. Love it so much. Two of them. And obviously they're a pair. Yes. 
I'm really excited about these. I can't wait to wear them to work. Yeah. I picked up a couple other things from her, but I just really wanted to show you guys these. Anyways, that is it. That is it. Um, there's nothing else for me to squirrel away on. I thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I am curious though, have you been feeling super crafty, energetic, want to make all the things lately? Maybe, maybe it's a byproduct of being stuck in the house. Maybe it's just that time of year. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I doubt it though, but curious. Anyways, thank you for spending some time with me. I really love the time that we spend together. If you enjoyed it um, and would like to be notified when new videos come out, there is a little notification button here, here, I'm not sure. There's a little bell beside the subscribe button and if you hit that, you will get notifications when new episodes come out, which are more or less every two weeks. Um, this last chunk was three because I was feeling pretty down last weekend. I was just not, not feeling up to recording. So apologies for that, but thanks for your patience. And I hope you guys have a spectacular next couple of weeks. I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day, be it with someone you love or um, yourself. Like, I just hope it's lovely. I hope it is absolutely everything that you are hoping it will be. And stay safe and warm and happy and healthy. And I will see you again soon.